Hey guys, it's Audra, and today we have a book outlet haul. Ten of these books are nonfiction because it's nonfiction November, but really that's what I've been gravitating more towards, weirdly enough. And then two of them are fiction, which we'll do at the very, very end. So five of these books are something to do with like DNA, eugenics, um, babies, just because like that is something I've always been interested in but just on my mind a lot lately for whatever reason, I don't know. Maybe it's because I paid for my eggs in a freezer yesterday, but that's a story for another day. Um, but the, few, the first book is called Future Face. It is a family mystery, an epic quest, and the secret to belonging. This is by Alex Wagner, and I believe this is kind of her story and um, journey through kind of coming to realize who she is regarding like her DNA because she was raised by a Burmese mother and a white American father and so she just saw herself as kind of what the future face of America would be like as more um, races are merging into brown singularity that is her words on the back of the book um, but then she comes to kind of explore what that means more and then just like the overarching question of does that all really matter in the grand scheme of things? But it says on the back, it's a narrative approach like Mary Roach, which she wrote stiff, I believe. And I really like that style. So I love narrative nonfiction. So this will be a good one to get into. Another one I've seen a lot when it comes to talking about DNA is The Violinist Thumb by Sam Keen. This is also like love war and genius as written by our genetic code so it just goes into a lot of different scientific principles about dna and um yeah i have no idea what else it's about so i just heard it's really good it is kind of a thicker read but i definitely picked that up from the bargain section and then the next one is Imbeciles, The Supreme Court, American Eugenics, and the Steriliz Sterilization of Carrie Buck by Adam Cohen. Um, I first found out about eugenics, I think in my early 20s by reading a fiction book, and I had no idea that was part of American history, and it very much is. And so I've always kind of kept my eye out for new books regarding that. And so this is a narrative about the 1927 Buck versus Bell ruling, um, making government sterilization of undesirable citizens law of the land and kind of how that all played out. I do know, I tried to get it from the library once, but it's just better to have a book that is like nonfiction, a little bit longer read in my hands so I can take it at my own pace. And so this is one that I've been wanting to get to since it came out. And now that it's in paperback, it's perfect because I prefer paperback. The next one is called The Strange Case of Dr. Cooney, How a Mysterious European Showman Saved Thousands of American Babies. And so we have um, a doctor that puts his patients on display, which these are um, babies that are considered like doomed infants. So like failed, I think, what do we call that now? Like failure to thrive kind of situations. And he puts them on display with um, sword swallowers, bearded ladies, burlesque shows across the nation. And so he becomes a savior to these families with premature infants and like that are then known as weaklings and like puts them on display, but also saves their lives. It sounds very crazy, but it's historical. So it happened. It says it's cut the energy of a can't put down thriller and I totally believe it based off of that premise. Another one that was about um, some babies that completely blew my mind in the synopsis. I believe this is actually young adult nonfiction, but it is the miracle and tragedy of the Dion quintuplets. I again had never heard of this before until seeing this book. These were quintuplets that were born in Ontario and the government seized them for custody and isolated them away from their family, um, supposedly in their best entrance, interest, but then exhibited, exhibited them for the public to see on display for nine years. They made a sideshow out of these 
quintuplets, these five babies. Um, it says their faces sold everything from Babe Ruth candy bars to Colgate toothpaste. Even Shirley Temple had a set of dolls based off of these quintuplets. So it's like the story of their life into adulthood and like the trauma, I'm assuming that part, like came out of that situation, but it's sickening. It's kind of like, yeah, it's just sickening, but I definitely want to read more about it to understand that whole diabolical situation but another one I've had on my radar since it came out just because it is by one of my favorite nonfiction authors for young readers Candace Fleming gold um it's the rise and fall of Charles Lindbergh Charles Lindbergh has also always been my, my um radar because I think I was a freshman in high school and like one of my research papers were based was like about the abduction of his child that they have never solved the case. And so, but the back of this, I didn't really understand what it was going to be about, which I'm intrigued. It says, first person to successfully fly across the Atlantic. Media sensation, Nazi sympathizer, anti-Semite, environmentalist, white nationalist, Charles Lindbergh was all this and more. So we are going to be, at least for me, going to be getting a look and to see like what kind of man this person actually was other than what we know him for historically. So yeah, I'm excited to kind of get a glimpse into what the real life situation was, but also to read another nonfiction book by this amazing author. Now, another one going into more of like a racial um, divide. It says, understanding a racial divide, we are not yet equal. Um, this was a read along on Teacher Graham with Molly from The Awkward Teacher. I believe over the summer and I did not get a chance to join it, but I did find it for cheap in paperback. And this is a young adult um, nonfiction that is a look at our under told history regarding the racial divide in our country, which I don't think there's ever too much education to be done about that. And so I'm excited to get into that. The next two are actually kind of going into um, well, I would consider deconstructing, um, what I have been raised in as like white Christianity. Again, I am a devout Christian. I believe in God. I just really struggle with some of the ideals that have been, um, shared about Christianity in the last several years. But the first one, again, going off of the racial, um, dividing it's called, Do All Lives Matter? The Issues We Can No Longer Ignore and the Solutions We All Long For. So this is a look at um, specifically Black Lives Matter and um, what Jesus actually says about that. And so this is a book in support of that. It says, something is wrong in our society, deeply wrong. Movements such as Black Lives Matters have arisen in response to recent displays of mistreatment and some of us defensively answer back. All lives matter, but do they really? This book is an exploration of that question. It delves into history and current events, into Christian teaching and personal stories in order to start a conversation about the way forward. It's raw but hopeful words will help us move from apathy to empathy and from empathy to action. We cannot do everything, but we can each do something. So I am, it's very short, but I think short is kind of like, get it together, but anyways. Um, the next one I thought was very interesting because this is an idea that's been kind of like on the back of my mind for the last few years, and that is toxic charity, how churches and charities hurt those who help and how to reverse it. I cannot remember where I heard about like the first time about like how volunteering at orphanages in third world countries is actually more harmful than it is helpful and i think it's going to take a look into that but also like the way where we put our money with like missionary work and all that kind of stuff we've just um it's one of those things that the church as a whole needs to take a better look at and so i'm excited to see what this has to say about that one because i have not heard that of this book until i'm um, browsing on book outlet um, and then a random one that was probably the most expensive one in the group, but just sounds so intriguing to me as a librarian is The Dark Archives. I heard about this from Olive over at the book Olive or a book Olive. Yes. 
um, who is the host of Nonfiction November. But this is a librarian's investigation into the science and history of books bound in human skin. So um, it's just going to be an intriguing read just based off of that premise alone about the history of how books are made. And it's a really actually pretty book. But And then we have two kind of random um, fiction books. One of my favorite authors, Renee Watson, Ways to, Make a Sun Ways to Make Sunshine. I have already read this book. It's a super cute book about a girl named Ryan Hart. It is middle grade um, and it's finally out in paperback and it was on the website. So I needed that and I need to read the second book that's in her little series. And then I also randomly got The 12 Dates of Christmas. This is just a adult um, chick lit book. It says one woman, 12 Mr. Rights, what could go wrong? So basically it's 12 dates with 12 different men during the Christmas season. We'll see if it's any good, but it just kind of fits into the season and you know, the season of life as well over here. So um, yeah, lots of new books, lots of reading to do, but I would love to hear if you've read any of these, what are your thoughts? Um, what have you read for nonfiction November that really sticks out to you that I should be looking into reading next? So I will talk to you soon. Have a great day.